our daughter Nika was diagnosed with diabetes type 1. She was just two years old. She went from being a complete healthy child to a child that needed approximately 10 to 12 insulin injections every single day and the same amount of blood sugar tests in her small fingers and small toes. I remember they told me it doesn't hurt, she'll get used to it. Unfortunately, that is not the case. When you're two years old, you do not understand why you need to do all of this. Today, Nika is eight years old, and you can't tell by just looking at her that she has this diagnose. She looks like any other child, but that is not the case. Nothing will ever be the same. Diabetes type 1 is one of the oldest diseases that we have, but still, we don't have a cure. As a mother, I think we need to find easier ways of living with the diagnose, and one way is getting the help from a diabetic alert dog. The bond between humans and dogs is truly amazing. Not only are dogs said to be a man's best friend, they can also save lives. Molly will be trained to become a certified diabetic alert dog. A diabetic alert dog is trained to detect blood sugar changes, to prevent Nika's blood sugar to become dangerously high or low. The dog's nose is so sensitive it can scent and alert even before Nick is actually high or low. A diabetic alert dog will learn to get help if needed 24 hours a day. We started training Molly at the age of 4 months together with SOS, the Swedish Service and Hearing Association. Our trainer has many years of experience with training service dogs. SOS is a part of ADEU, Assistance Dogs Europe, which means that Molly is trained according to international standard. Molly is going to work for Nike, but she will also be trained to report not only to Nike, but to the whole family. In Sweden, the dogs start the official training program within SOS earliest at the age of one, but should not be older than three. But before the dog can start, it has to be examined by a vet so that she has no breed-related diseases and has to have x-rays of the hips and elbows performed. Also, an evaluation of the dog's personality needs to have been done so that she has what it takes to work as a service dog. SOS believes that the breed does not matter when choosing a dog. They focus on recommending dogs with the right personality. However, you should choose a dog that suits your lifestyle and fits with you and your family. The dog you choose should of course love to work and be eager to please. It has to be focused, well behaved so she can work both within the home but also in public places. The dog needs to be friendly, of course, towards all people and other dogs. Cannot show any signs of aggressions or fear. Also, you want to select a dog that has a great deal of confidence and that is curious by nature. When we train Molly, we are working with something called positive reinforcement, meaning we give her attention with treats, love and play when she does what we want her to do. And when she doesn't, we just ignore her because we want her to do the right thing, but we don't want her to be afraid that she doesn't get it right the first time. We do not want a dog that only works when getting a command. We want a dog that will think for itself. As a service dog, you are expected to always behave in an appropriate manner in public. Therefore, these dogs are trained to go from full power playing outside to settling down and relaxing very quickly when needed, so-called on and off training. We naturally train Molly in all kinds of different environments, as she will need to be comfortable in various places that Nikki in the future will need her in. Different loud noises, grounds, all kinds of people and other animals, we let her get acquainted to. Everyday obedience is something we started to train Molly from day one. We train her to be responsible and tidy up her toys, but also to pick up everything we drop. Getting help is something we train Molly. We train her to be persistent and not to give up, even if she does not get any attention. For instance, if we are sleeping and Nick is low, we need to be sure that Molly does not give up before she gets our attention. But we also want Molly to be able to find someone other than a family member, if needed, and alert and lead that person directly to Nika. 
Hide and seek is a fun game, but also a useful skill to teach Molly, who might one day need to find Nika. The most important thing is of course scent training. We started introducing low and high blood sugar smells when she was just a puppy. The first step was for Molly to recognize a smell that was different. Once she recognizes that smell, we trained her to alert. High and low blood sugars does not smell the same way, so we are training Molly to alert us by bumping my hand when she smells a scent of high or low. And then I ask her, what is it Molly? And if Nick is low, she will lay down, and if Nick is high, she will spin around. The purpose of the alert is for Molly to get our attention when she smells a change in the blood sugar. The next step is to train her to, by herself, figure out what to do when she smells a high or a low. She has her own cupboard in our kitchen. Here we train her to bring Nika what she needs based on her current blood sugar level. Most of the training is done when Nika is not around, therefore we keep samples of different scents from Nika in the fridge. We hide these samples so that Molly can alert to us whenever Nika is not at home. From that the official training starts. It usually takes approximately a year until the dog graduates, all depending on the dog of course. A year after graduation and then each year during the period that the dog is active service dog, an annual test has to be done. This is to ensure that the dog and the handler, in our case Nike, maintains their knowledge. When training a small child and a dog, it's really important that it's not about the training all the time. They need to have fun, they need to love each other in order to become a really tight team. Uh, today Molly and Nika are quite inseparable. Uh, wherever you find Nika, you can be sure to find Molly. And she's always keeping a close eye on my daughter and keeping her safe.